Hey everyone uh, out there in YouTube land, it has been a hot minute, but I am back. It's Madcap Gamer here. Um, I just wanted to uh, briefly, I, as brief as possible, talk about something that happened to me recently with all of this um, old world stuff coming out and everyone getting very excited about it, including myself. Um, some friends and I were talking about it and deep diving some YouTube channels. Um, Jordan Sorcery, um, if you're looking for one, um, 90% geek, I want to say. Um, sorry if I got that wrong. That's another great channel. Um, getting into 5th edition and the older editions of Warhammer. And so we decided to do the same, to go back and sort of see for ourselves um, where we're just falling into the hype. Um, did we really love those rank and flank tabletop? warhammer fifth edition games um, we went with fifth edition um, because that's where we started and you know um arguably things got a bit weirder and a bit less fun towards eighth edition end times um for all of us and we wanted to um really sort of find out like if we enjoyed it still if we enjoyed it in the first place or was it just the nostalgia um you know, I remember the games, the fun, the magic items, the power cards, the total power cards, all that fun stuff. Uh, but I also remember like arguments with my brother over whether he could use Teclas and I could use Gorthor, um, whether that magic item was OP and we shouldn't use it, um, all sorts of weird stuff. So let's go back and play a game of fifth edition. And this I organized with a friend of mine and he brought some old vampire counts that he had. Um, I found my OG uh, Beastman army. We decided on a thousand points just to get our heads around how the old Warhammer still worked um, and all of that sort of fun stuff. We set ourselves up, um, read the rule book thoroughly, read the battle books and all that sort of stuff and showed up for a game of Warhammer 5th edition. Now, we were so excited to get this um game happening so interested in the game itself i didn't actually videotape anything or take that many photos um because we didn't know it was going to be thick we didn't want to g it up too much um and then it was just oh this is a really old really clunky really terrible game so what happened instead though was something magic and that's why the few photos that i've got have been put together into a little video for you guys um but that's getting ahead of myself let's go and have a look um i went full nerd i i made like a little white dwarf photograph <laughs> for my army um the nerf herders i made a naf name because they all had naf names back in those days um made up a little thing like in white dwarf um Korgor, shaman champion now i know what you're thinking shaman champion why <laughs> just a shaman champion i actually forgot i got i was reading the fifth edition chaos book and i genuinely confused myself and thought 25% maximum points on heroes. So with a 1000 point army, that had to be 250 points. That was not the case at all. I could have picked any old Lord and made a retinue at least his points cost. So as long as he was under 500 points, I would have been fine. Figured that out the night before talking to my friends and um, decided to go with it anyway. What the hell? Um, I, you know, one attack leadership seven shaman champion leading your army what could possibly go wrong recipe for success um it says magic item in here because you didn't have to share back then what magic items you were bringing and i was sharing this with my friends before i showed up so that's a wand of jet i think the um the champion in the bone pickers has the banisher sword which is an, like an undead specific sword i was being really cheeky um scrimshaws um another unit of 20 gores don't have anything all halberd shields. I decided not to give them light armor less, like I always did as a kid um, because I was a kid and I was like, why wouldn't I give them light armor? That's just a no brainer. And then as an adult, I'm like, these guys are in loincloths. Um, I, <laughs> I can't respectably, I can't respect myself and say that they've got light armor on. So we skipped that. And the spine tappers, 15 ungors with skirmish rule, which I figured out after deciding on, um, they don't have the infighting rule if they're skirmish. So that was a pretty good choice. Um, I find um, here is the undead army. Now we didn't talk to my friend about doing all these NAF army lists and stuff. So he didn't have one, but here's a look at his army. There's uh, three blocks of skeletons there. The vampire count is like a level three. He's in that unit on the left there. 
tucked behind that standard bearer and the other two have necromancers in them there's a unit of ghouls as well but they're sort of way over on one side you'll see them in this page because i went full nav and did a white dwarf style map as well so there's the deployment of the two armies the ghouls on the top left um the three blocks of skeletons and two gores and a unit of ungos. So only a thousand points <laughs> which is not much in the old warhammer days but um, and it really looks, when you got photos of it, it does not look like much. But then you get to see the magic cards and stuff and all the chaos gifts that were rolled for the game, which is just an, an, a level of delight already. They haven't, we haven't started playing 5th edition and we've got, we've shuffled through our magic cards, we've shuffled through our magic items. It's just delightful. Um, unfortunately, my Shaman Champion pulled like two terrible spells it's like a short range stream of corruption i think and uh boon of zinch which is a spell that will he can cast to get more power power cards to cast more spells but he's only got the one spell so that's fairly useless and very upsetting looking across the table at the uh vampire count and his uh necromancers who got to choose their spells um didn't know that that was a thing back in fifth there's the vampire count um by the way looks like an elf ranger but you would too um vampirism it's good on the skin basement got turn one um and of course having a shaman champion as their general what could go wrong well infighting tests can go wrong so the first test of the first game um the gauze on the left failed completely so it was only the one unit of gauze that marched up and the um ungors with their super slinky march um around the outside see if we can outflank being skirmishes um i don't know is it sneaky enough I'm not sure um the vampire counts were very unexciting and unimpressive in their turn i didn't have any spells to cast in my turn because i was out of range uh, vampire counts move forward they're three inches or six inches for the march um and the wizard um got a really naff roll for winds of magic so it didn't do anything on his turn one turn surviving against necromancy magic um, is all right for the beastmen, I reckon, any day of the week. Um, the ghouls, you can see, are sort of squaring off against the other gauze. Now, the gauze on the left have moved up in this picture. It wasn't until the end of the movement phase that I remembered um, in fighting tests. So ignore that. Um, and I just had to get a photo of this very weird setup. I was convinced for the entire game that my opponent was doing something super clever with these regiments being in this sort of strange checkerboard formation and i was going to regret it later or something maybe he'd googled something we'll find out by the end of the game and we rolled four turns so you know these poor ungors have four turns to get around the outside of these buildings um and into the flank of the undead and of course as you can see on the left there we went for those really naff cardboard buildings as well where we could fit them in there um got to go whole hog uh turn two the um basemen this time the ones on the right uh failed their infighting test and went nowhere so the gores on the left kind of got to catch up um and the ungors continued around the outside of that building hoping to you know at least give the skeletons uh thoughts about worrying about their flank maybe um the basement shaman champion actually got off stream of corruption um against the undead skeletons um, ahead of him knocked, took out like four or five, um, which was not bad for the magic phase uh, where I was thinking that everything was just going to be dispelled by um, undead wizards. Um, got that one through, but nothing much else exciting happening. When we flip over to the undead side, um, they all moved up um, in the same sort of plodding manner that they have been. Um, getting nervously too far away from those ungors on the flank now. Um, and also they just cast um, raised skeletons and raised, I can't remember if it was four or five, but they raised exactly the amount of skeletons that I got rid of. So that was another round two, bottom of round two, and we have done absolutely nothing to each other except sort of shuffling slightly closer together. Close enough that, you know, we're planning to, to get in contact and do some damage next turn. Wouldn't it suck if the basemen couldn't do it? And that's, of course, exactly what happened. Um, basemen on the left fail another infighting test, and the basemen on the right 
in range, but they fail their fear check with their lowly shaman champion's leadership of seven. Um, the Ungors are still going around this building, um, so nothing much happens. Unfortunately, in this round, we get uh, the undead get a spell off on the beastmen in the center, um, killing a couple of my gores, even though they've got two wounds. I can't remember which spell it was, but it was like, roll these dice, this, these models die, um, which is very upsetting for <laughs> Beastman, having those two wounds and having it completely nullified. Um, they Not in range, um, the Vampire Count Gamer seem to have no problem with just at least walking them straight up to the gores, um, seemed very confident in his formations and stuff, and starting to really worry about that unit of gores that are out there by themselves. But you can see the ungors getting close to achieving their dreams of charging these guys in the flank at the top there. Um, and those gores in the center really dying to use their special weapons and um, magic. There they are, so close, the ungors. Live the dream, boys. <laughs> Getting a flank. It's a fl it's a rank and flank game. Somebody has got to be flanked, right? Um, and turn four is the last turn of the game. Um, that's what we rolled, so we stuck with it. We didn't change anything. And surely no more shenanigans. Well, of course. Um, the baseman on the left failed their charge distance, and this, like, you really have no idea. Um, until you go back to fifth edition, there's no extra dice to roll. Um, so eight inches charge range is not what you think it is. It's a lot shorter. Um, so they failed against the ghouls um, and the beautiful gauze in the center failed. I don't know at this stage whether it was an infighting check or a um, fear check, but they just refused to charge it must have been a fear check because you don't need in fighting if you're charging. Um, and I think I triumphantly declared that in turn four and went, ah, I'm close enough to charge, definitely, and I don't need to take an infighting test then. And then I promptly failed <laughs> fear check instead. Um, this, honestly, so much fun. Um, by this stage, it was turn four, and my opponent had actually, like, brought, I think, a dispel scroll um, and hadn't used it because the spells were so pathetic and he said ah may as well so he just dispelled my magic and i got nowhere with it and the ungors realized after the gores on the left tried to charge um that they could definitely not make that charge range but they might if the undead charge i might be able to take that table quarter because i'm the only ones left in it so they just kind of stayed where they were um not exciting but it, the only thing they could possibly do ah <sighs> And then tragedy. This is the last turn of the game, remember? And we have played 5th edition in like, I don't know, 20 years, um, showing our age. The undead ghouls fail their charge. They could not close the distance um, against the ghoul and at least get a combat going. The undead in the center definitely made their charge. And once again, the ghouls failed their fear check and were outnumbered and took off. Uh, absolutely ran for it. Um, neither of the unit of uh, undead that charged were anywhere close. These guys really legged it. You can barely see them in this photo. That's how far away they got. I think it was like an 11 inches or something I rolled. So the undead were left holding the bag. Um, the gores getting away safely but it's turn four and it's a bottom of turn four so they can't count for table quarters they count as a defeated unit uh, for victory points and just because he could um we realized in this phase that a fleeing wizard also could not use his spell even if i pulled a dispel card in the um, deck which i think i pulled a destroy magic card in the in the deck this time but he was fleeing so he couldn't use it so curse of years got off on the gores and absolutely took out like five of them six of them maybe um and the shaman himself as well so just as they were leaving the board 
a little bit of salt in the wound. Um, and as you probably guessed, um, quite a easy victory for the vampire counts without, I would like to emphasize here, a single axe or bone being swung. Nobody got near um, actual combat in this game. Neither of us brought archers or had archers. Um, I'm not sure about vampire counts, but they're definitely a more limited list than undead. Um, I didn't have any archers. I'm beastmen. So no archers. One shaman on one side versus three magic casters on the other side. Um, somehow I got seriously good chaos gifts and some seriously good rolls on my dispel to get rid of most of his magic, but nothing could save me from Curse of Years at the end. Um, and I just needed to put this up and share with you guys. And I know some people are sitting there going, this is a game where nothing happened. Um, but this is the first, I kid you not, most exciting game we have played of Warhammer Fantasy in probably at least a decade. And we play regular tournaments every year. There's a friendly tournament, eight to 10 players. We all play Warhammer Fantasy or Age of Sigma now. Um, we all go around to each other's tables and like, what's happening? This guy's dead. That guy's wounded. These guys are wiped out. But this game, pulling those cards out, um, getting the total power, getting the dis destroy spell, um, missing those charges, failing those fear checks. Um, it was <laughs> just so exciting. Um, so nail biting every turn, <laughs> even when my uh, fiance is walking around the apartment saying what's happened now and it's like still nothing um and she's like what are you shouting about it's just so exciting so thank you for listening to this very brief battle report um thank you for everyone and, and everyone's youtube channel that inspired me to go play fifth edition again the magic that we discovered is that um we I guess kind of overshot the mark i we picked up fifth edition to play it and see if the old world would still interest us, would still get us in, um, whether we'd want to play it um, or we were just being nostalgic and kidding ourselves. And in the end, um, I think we overshot. And now both of us, the, the two players on the day, are like, what's the point of getting old world Warhammer when Warhammer 5th edition was practically perfect in every way? Um, so we will definitely, um, we've... It's been a it's been a week now. We've we've already got plans for a campaign, a map campaign to start. Um, another player to join us. Hopefully, a couple more players to join in. Um, fifth edition cards, magic cards, magic items, um, crazy characters, um, special items that will just you know if you score a hit, you kill the model. Craziness um, that just works in such a sweet wonderful way anyway i've ranted and raved enough the second game that we played just after this one um because this one was so fast and nothing happened um i'm hoping to get up very soon um let me know if this is uh, a, a format that you appreciate otherwise i'll have to go back and find um we'll get video footage for the next few games um but thank you for watching um you know like and subscribe you don't have to but um if you if you uh, didn't like this format go and check out uh jordan sorcery and 90 percent geek i think there's another one um 50 version 2.0 or something it does battle reports just like the old uh white dwarf ones absolutely um wonderful time had if you take nothing else away from this video, uh, if you played 5th edition Warhammer and you're thinking of playing 5th edition Warhammer again or getting into Old Hammer, 5th edition Warhammer is better than you remember it being. I know, I thought I was kidding myself and it was just the nostalgia and being a kid talking, but it is better than you remember. Go back and play it. Do yourselves a favor. Anyway, um, I better let you guys get to it. So that's it from me. Um, our next video is coming out soon. And thanks for watching.